The title of my message that I want to share with you today is called Breaking the Chains of Limiting Beliefs. Breaking the Chains of Limiting Beliefs. So, once upon a time, there was a farmer who found an egg in the forest. And he took that egg home and he put it in a chicken coop. And the chickens then started to brood over this egg until the day that this egg hatched. But the chickens didn't know it. The hatchlings didn't know it. But he was actually an eagle. So the eagle grew up in the chicken coop and he thought that he was a chicken. And he acted like a chicken. He thought like a chicken. He ate like a chicken. And then one day something strange happened. The eagle heard a call of a huge bird that was flying past the chicken coop. And he didn't know it then, but it was an eagle cry. The other chickens then went and they hid away. But it was as of in that very moment that a switch went off. That a switch went off inside that little eagle. It was as if the cry triggered him and he realized there was something more on the inside of him than the life of a chicken. But there's actually two endings to this story. You know, the chicken heard the call and the one story goes that this little chicken then just kept on living, or this little eagle just went on living his little chicken life and he died there in the chicken coop. That's the one end to the story. The other end of the story is that he triggered him and as he heard that cry that he started raising and expanding his wings and he started to fly and he became what he was always destined to be. So, what are you this morning? Are you a chicken? Or are you an eagle? You see now, I want to say this morning, there's probably nothing wrong with being a chicken. But, it is a tragedy if you're an eagle and you're living like a chicken. Okay, and that is sometimes what happens with people. You see, because it is about your mindset, and it is about your beliefs. What do you believe? What is your mindset? Do you have limiting beliefs? Do you have beliefs that is limiting your life? Things you believe in your life that is actually holding you back. Things that are keeping you in bondage. And once again, that's the title of my message this morning. God wants to break the chains of limiting beliefs. God wants to break the chains of limiting beliefs in our lives. So, what is your mindset today? What is your mindset today? What are you thinking? What are your beliefs? What do you think about your life? When you think about your life, what do you think? When you think about your future, what do you think? What do you believe about your future? You see, sometimes we live in a place where we are so conditioned by the news. We are so conditioned by the world. We are so conditioned with the circumstances around us that we have this negative mindset. And I don't know if you know this, but they actually say that people living in the Vault Triangle are very um, negative people. So how many negative people do I have in this place this morning? That was not a good place to say. Okay. So sometimes that is the mindset. Sometimes there's a mindset. And even in a place like the Vault Triangle, there's a mindset. And people tend to be conditioned by that mindset. They fall into that mindset. They fall into that belief system. And unfortunately, if you fall into a belief system, it starts to govern your life. It starts to condition your life and you start behaving like everyone around you. It's like the chicken that I was talking, the eagle that I was talking about. That eagle was in a chicken coop and he started behaving like a chicken. 
Even though he was an eagle, he behaved like a chicken. And that is sometimes what happens to us. Because we're so conditioned by the world, because we're so conditioned by the circumstances, we fall into the trap and we allow ourselves to be conditioned by everything around us except by what God wants us to be influenced with. So, you see, it's important that we know what we think. It's important that we know our thoughts, our mindsets. Because listen to this, your thoughts are the architects of your destiny. Your thoughts are the architects of your destiny. Your thoughts sculpt your future. Your thoughts sculpt the destiny, the plan, the purpose that God has for you. And in the Bible, there were actually once two blind men that wanted Jesus to heal them. Two blind men came to Jesus and they asked him to heal them. And it was their mindset that actually determined whether they received the healing. And I want to, you to listen to this. Matthew 9, 27. We're going to read all this 30. And it says, When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. Verse 28. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Verse 29. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. Verse 30. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus suddenly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. And I want us to focus on verse 28. And it says, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And I want you to hear what Jesus is saying this morning. He's saying to you, Do you believe? That I'm able to do this. In verse 29, Jesus said to him, He touched their eyes and he said, Let it be for you according to your faith. Let it be for you according to your faith. The Passion Translation says, Do you believe that I have the power to restore sight to your eyes? Do you believe that God has the power to restore your life? And then they replied, Yes, Lord, we believe. In verse 29, then Jesus put his hands over their eyes and he said, You will have what your faith expects. So say to the person next to you, say to them, You will have what your faith expects. Okay? Do you believe it? Yes. Okay? And that is, You will have what your faith expects. So let it be for you according to your faith. You will have what your faith expects. And it was the belief of these people that actually shaped their future. So the question was, what do you believe? What do you believe? What do you believe about your life? What do you believe about your future? What do you believe about God's plan and purpose for your life? And it was Henry Ford that said this. He said, those who believe they can and those who believe they can't are both right. You see, he actually got those words from Jesus. Let it be for you according to your faith. But those who believe they can are right. How many of you believe this morning you can? Okay, you are right. How many of you believe this morning you can't? You are right. If you put up your hand, if you, if you, if you put up your hand. I see someone put up their hand. Okay, so the thing is, is that let it be for you according to your faith. Your mindset matters. And that is what this is all about. It's about your mindset. If you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can't, you can't. So the question this morning is, do you have limiting beliefs? Do you have beliefs that is limiting your life and what God can actually do in your life? Are your beliefs empowering you? Or do you need to break the chains of limiting beliefs in your life? Do you need to break the chains of limiting beliefs in your life? So let me first of all say, what is a limiting belief? Okay, so a limiting belief is a conviction. It's a perspective that constrains our view. Okay, so you can hear that. It is something that constrains your view. And it's your view of yourself, your view of others, and even your view of the world around you. Okay, it's a, something that constrains you. It is also something that hinders your personal growth or even your potential. 
So let me say this to you this morning. Do you know that in Christ you have unlimited potential? Okay, that was a good place to say. Okay, in Christ you have unlimited potential. God has placed so much potential in you that you don't even realize the potential that God has placed in the inside of you. You will never fully tap and understand the full potential that God has placed on the inside of your heart. You see, but the thing is, is that it is sometimes hindered by our beliefs. It is sometimes hindered by our mindset. You will never fully be what God wants you to be unless you change your mindset. Okay, so it is also something that can create mental barriers. Okay, a mental barrier. So sometimes people have mental barriers. Sometimes they think, you know, if you ask them, can you do this? Then they say, no, I can't. Okay, but then you ask them, have you ever tried it? Then they say, no, I haven't tried it. So how do you know that you can't do it if you've never tried it? Okay, I'm sure. Let me give an example. Jan, when he started playing the guitar, if you asked him, can I play guitar? He probably said, no, I can't. Okay, but what did he do? He tried it. He had to take a step of faith. He had to do something that he never tried before. And then he started practicing. He developed the skills to do that. But there was perhaps in the back of his mind, there was a mindset that said, no, you can't do this. Okay, what do we do a lot of times when we have that mindset? We quit. We give up. We think that is, and it becomes a barrier in your mind. And you keep on saying to yourself, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. And guess what? Let it be for you according to your faith. You see, sometimes limiting beliefs can even cause mental barriers about the people around you. Do you know that sometimes we limit the people around us? Okay, we look at someone and we say, oh, that person won't amount to anything. Okay? You know that that's only your perspective. If they get hold of God and God gets hold of them, the potential is unlimited. Okay? But sometimes we limit the potential that God actually places on people. So, and it's all about the mindsets. It can even stop you from reaching goals. Sometimes we, we want to do something, but we, we stop trying to pursue it because we believe that we can't. So we need a more empowering mindset. We need a different mindset because your mindset matters. Okay, did you know that? Your mindset matters. And that's what Proverbs 23 verse 7 says. It says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Okay, I want you to listen carefully to that. As a man thinks. It doesn't say as a man acts. It doesn't say as a man does. It is as a man thinks in his heart, so easy. We are not who we are, we are who we think we are. We are not who we are, we are who we think we are. So who do you think you are? You know, sometimes we have a total wrong mindset about ourselves. So, to illustrate that to you this morning, maybe I can ask Young to just come and help me and hand out a few here. I don't think you can all see it from here, but I'm going to pass it around so you can take a look at it. But uh, this is a picture. It's a picture. Okay, it's an illusion. So let me ask you this morning, when you look at this picture, what do you see? What do you see? Anyone? Say again? A young woman. Okay, the same. Well, everyone see a young woman. How many people see a young woman? Okay, what else do you see? Can you see anything else? Maybe you need to take a closer look at it. Okay, there's actually in this picture, there's also an elderly lady. Okay, so the, the interesting thing is that they actually say that, psycholog psychologists say that if you are older, you will see the elderly lady. If you are younger, you will see the younger lady. Okay, so that tells you also something. Age is in the mind. <laughs> 
Sometimes age is in the mind. But the point is that if I say to you that there's an older lady in this picture, you might fight with me. You might say to me, no, no, no. All I see is a young lady in this picture. Okay, and that's sometimes what we do in life. Our perspective is the only perspective. My way of seeing things is the only way. My view is the only view. Okay, but what we don't realize is that once again, we have these limiting beliefs. We see things in a certain way. We perceive things in a certain way about ourselves, about our spouses, about our workplace, about the economy, about all of these different things. And our perception, we think our perception is the right one, when in actual truth, it might just as well be the wrong one. Okay, so your mindset matters. What are your beliefs? And once again, what are your limiting beliefs? What are the thoughts, the mindsets that is limiting you in your life? Now let me give you an example of a limiting belief that, that I discovered this weekend that I had. This Saturday, I was in a meeting in Midrand with about 200 people. And of that 200 people, about 100 of them earned a monthly passive income between 40,000 Rand to 200,000 Rand per month. And one of them, listen to this, it might shock you, were from Vrijenigen. It wasn't me. Okay, not yet. Okay, but there was someone who was from Vrijenigen. Now, I want you to notice this. It's not about the money. Okay, don't misunderstand me. It's not about the money. Money has never been a motivation in my life. But what sometimes happens is, is that we have a belief that in today's economy, it is impossible to earn an income of 200,000 Rand in a time like this. Okay, how many people actually do believe that? How many people, if you're honest with yourself this morning, you believe that it's impossible to do that? Okay, so people say, and they have these limiting mindsets, they say, oh, you know what? Times are hard. We're living in a difficult season. Now, I'm not saying that we should walk around with... Um, with our head buried in the sand and we say that, no, 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 you know, it's just all moonshine and roses. It's not. Okay, but what I want to show you about those people is that those people didn't inherit that money. They didn't steal that money. Okay, they earned it through a specific way. But what I believed is that what I, what I believed that was impossible, I found was possible. There were actually people with me in the room that did that. And yet I had the limiting belief that I thought it's impossible. Okay, how many of us have those type of limiting beliefs? You see, they are in the same circumstances than me. They live in the same place as me. Yet they have something different. So they didn't let their circumstances limit them. So I thought to myself, when I, when I realized that, I thought to myself, what other lies do I believe? What other lies do I believe about my life? What other lies do I believe about my future? What other lies do I believe about the plans and the purposes that God has for me? About what God can do? You see, we have to break the chains of limiting beliefs over our lives. We have to break the chains of limiting beliefs over our lives. Let me give you a few examples of limiting beliefs. And the thing is that we all have these limiting beliefs in our lives. Sometimes they are formed by our family. How many times have you heard someone say that that has just always been in my family? People in my family have always struggled with anger. People in my family have always been poor. People in my family have always this. Okay, guess what? You just spoke a limiting belief. Okay, you spoke something over yourself that is not necessarily something that God wants you to have. So they become our worst enemies. These limiting beliefs comes, becomes your worst enemy because you believe you can never get out of a specific circumstance. So once again, the question is, what do you believe? What we don't realize is that this belief system can limit what God wants to do in your life. Did you know that? These belief systems can limit what God wants to do in your life. And this is actually what the Bible talks about, Psalm 78 verse 41. 
God said this about the Israelites. He says, yes, again and again, they limited the Holy One of Israel. What? Can a person limit God? Can a person limit God? Yes, God says it. In His Word, He says that the people of Israel limited them because they didn't believe that God could do it. They limited God. So the word limited there actually comes from two root words and it means, listen to this, grieving God by scratching out an imprint. Grieving God by scratching out an imprint. So the picture that I want you to see is that so many times when we have a limiting belief, it's a thought pattern that is engraved into our minds and it's something that we've scratched into our minds, into our mindsets and that mindset has become so part of you that it actually, listen to that, sometimes it grieves God. Sometimes our limiting beliefs grieves God. Okay, isn't that what happened a lot of times when Jesus tried to minister miracles? Now he couldn't, there were towns where he couldn't do miracles because the people of that town didn't believe. Okay, people limit God. Where are you limiting God in your life? Where are you limiting God? You see, sometimes we put God in a box. We put ourselves in a box. Okay, and we say that these are the limits of my life. This is what I can achieve. This is what I can do, but no more. Okay, there's a story that I heard about a quite successful man who went on vacation with his wife. And this man, one day, he and a friend was driving around the island of Hawaii while they were there on holiday. And they were looking at all the beautiful palm trees. They were looking at the lush gardens. And then he saw a house on a hill. And it was the most beautiful house that he's ever seen. You know, it had a swimming pool. It was a really beautiful house. And it was on a hill. And he looked at that house and he just looked at it and he said to himself, I will never live in a place like that. And you guess what happened? On the inside of him, a voice rose up and it said, yes, you won't. You see, it was actually the voice of God who said to him, if you can't believe it, you can never receive it. If you can't believe it, if you have the mindset that it is impossible for you, listen, like Henry Ford said, if you think you can, you are right. If you think you can't, you are right. If you believe you will never have that, guess what? You will never have that. And who's the one that is limiting you from not having that? God? No. You. We do it ourselves. You see, he had to change his limited vision so that he could accomplish what God wanted to do in his life. So how do we limit God in our lives? What limiting beliefs do we have? Now, I want you to say this. Say no to the bus. Say no to the bus. You see, sometimes we have to say no to the bus. Okay, and isn't that what we do? Sometimes God tells you, do this, and we say, I want to, but. I want to, but. And the problem with a but is that a but always stands in the way of what God wants to do. It actually normally precedes a limiting belief. Okay, so Judges 6 verse 11 tells the story of a man who had a limiting belief. It says, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was an Oprah, which belonged to Joaz the Abel's right, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide from the Midianites. So, he was hiding from the Midianites. Okay, he was in the wheat press. Verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, Okay, this guy's hiding by the way. And listen to what the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord is actually Jesus. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and he said to him, Mighty man of valor. How many mighty men of valor do you know that are hiding in a wheat press? Okay, but the angel looked at him and, and Jesus looked at him and he said, Mighty man of valor. Verse 13, Gideon said to him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why did all of this happen to us? And where are all his miracles which your fathers told us about saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? 
But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Can you imagine the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords appears to you and you t- he tells you, you are a mighty man of valor and you say to him, no, nope, I'm the least in all my family. I'm the weakest. I'm the most terrible. Okay, and that's exactly what Gideon did. He said that I'm the smallest in the tribe of my family. I'm the weakest. Why? How can you ask me to go and do this? You see, he had limiting beliefs. God told him to deliver the people, but he had limiting beliefs. You see, sometimes God gives us a promise. He gives us a vision. He gives us a dream. But instead of believing God, we have a but. Lord, thank you for the promise, but. You see, it's a limiting belief, and we're never going to be what God called us to be if we keep on holding on to those limiting beliefs. You see, the dictionary actually defines an excuse as a self-justification. A defense of some offense or behavior or a failure to keep a promise. You see, sometimes we justify ourselves by saying that we can't. We justify our behavior by saying that we can't. But if we ever want to be once again what God wants us to be, we will have to get rid of that mindset. Sometimes we don't want to step outside of our comfort zone. Okay, and we, once again, we have all these excuses. So I want you to listen to some of these limiting beliefs, you know, some of these buts. And maybe you can identify a but that you spoke about yourself. Okay, sometimes we say, God tells you to do something, but you say, but it is hard. Now, let me ask you once again, is it really hard? Is it really hard? How would you know? Have you done it? Have you ever made through the process of trying it? Okay, but the problem is saying that we actually gives us the illusion that it is impossible. You see, we have the illusion that it is impossible, that it is something that I cannot do. So what do we say? It is hard. And you don't even try it because it is hard. But did you know that everything that is easy was at one point in your life hard. Have you seen little children when they start walking? It's hard for them. Okay, they fall. They scratch their little knees. Sometimes they fall on their faces. But what if every little kid, they say, no, 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 it's too hard. I'm not, I'm not going to walk anymore. It is just too hard. I'm just going to keep on sitting here. What would happen? The child would lose the, the, the use of their legs. You see, but that's what we do sometimes in life. We say, this is hard. And then we sit in that place, we remain in that place because we have a but. Okay, but the second one, we say it's too risky, but it's too risky. But did you know that if you make an intelligent decision that you pray through, that you base on good research and you make a solid plan and you inquire of God, that it actually doesn't become risky at all. But because we say it is too hard, sorry, it is too risky, we don't take the chance to pursue it. We choose fear instead of taking the risk because we have actually a fear of failure. Sometimes we say, but it will take too long. Okay, so let me ask you the question, what is a long time anyway? Whether you do it or whether you don't do it, guess what? Time is going to pass. Time is going to pass. But it is important that we actually make the decision and say, I'm going to start today. They always say, when is the best time to plant the tree? Yesterday. Okay, and if you didn't use yesterday, when is the best time? Today. So think about it. If you start today doing something that you didn't think that you would be able to do, How far could he have already been if he did it a few years back? Okay, but we say it will take too long. Sometimes we say it is too over, but it's too overwhelming. You know, it's too overwhelming. You see, we feel overwhelmed because we sometimes think too big. We think, we see this big thing that we want to accomplish, and we see this big thing, but we don't realize that any, any journey that you start in your life starts with one step. 
You may not be able to do everything that you see in the big picture, but if you take one step, you will be able to get there. Okay, everything you start, it can be overwhelming in the beginning, but take one step towards it and it can change your life. We also use this one a lot. But I don't have time. How many hours do you have in your day? 24. Okay, so maybe if you eat the bowl one like young, then you have a 25 hour day. Okay, but the thing is, is that we actually in reality all only have 24 hours a day. Listen, there are people who are doing what you want to do in the same amount of time that you have. They are living the life that you want to do. Okay? So if other people can do it, why can't we do it? You see, so there are limiting beliefs, chains, that things that we say to ourselves that stops us from reaching our destiny. So what limiting beliefs are holding you back this morning? What limiting beliefs are holding you back this morning? You know, sometimes we've heard this, we say money is the root of all evil. That is a limiting belief and it is a lie. The Bible doesn't say money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. Listen, if you have that mindset, then you won't believe that you, can, that you, that you must get money because we all need money to live, don't we? Okay, but if you have that belief, that mindset, then you will, you will, not, you will have a, um, a hatred for money. Okay, and that will cause it not to come into your life. So it's a limiting belief. You know, what about this one? Money doesn't grow on trees. Okay, yes, we all know, you know, and we say that to people because we want to say to them, listen, don't overspend. Okay, but sometimes then we think to get money is hard. It becomes a limiting belief and you think it's impossible because, you know, it's just so hard to get money. What about don't burn your bridges? Okay, sometimes, you know, we believe in that, you know, the way that you leave a place is always the way that you enter into a new place. But sometimes you will stay in a place because you believe that if you burn those bridges, that, you know, there's no other option. Nothing else will ever come my way if I burn these bridges. But sometimes you have to let go of the old before you can step into the new. You see, so sometimes you have to burn the bridges. Sometimes you have to put the things of the past behind you. Otherwise, you will never reach the future that God has for you. And this one, life is hard. You know, how many times do we say that? And you know what? Guess what? It becomes a limiting belief. And because it becomes a limiting belief, we live with this mindset. We wake up in the morning and we feel, oh, life is hard. You have no motivation, you have no energy, you feel like you can't do anything, that you can't go anywhere because life is hard. Listen, it's a limiting mindset. It is causing you to think in a way and behave in a way that is contradicting the plan and the purpose that God has for you. And you will not reach the destiny and the purpose that God has for you unless you break that limiting mindset. And then also this one, good things come to those who wait. You know, sometimes we just wait, and we wait, and we wait, and what we don't realize, God is also waiting on you. He's waiting on you to take that step of faith. He's waiting on you to say, I'm going to step up out of the circumstances. I'm not going to allow the circumstances to control my life anymore, to dictate my future, to dictate my destiny. I'm going to stand up on my feet and I'm going to move forward and I'm going to take a step every day, one day a step at a time. Every day I'm going to take another step. And if I keep on taking the steps, eventually I will reach the destiny that God has for me. But you have to get rid of the mindset that says life is hard. And that good things comes to those who wait. So in closing this morning, I want to challenge you this morning. Don't wait for the new year. How many people are waiting for the new year? We're in December and people say, oh, I just want to rest. I'm tired. It's been a hard year. Okay, a limiting mindset. Okay, but change your mindset. Decide that today I'm going to get rid of all of these limiting beliefs in my life. And once again, Romans 12 verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Do not be fashioned, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs. 
but be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that you can live the acceptable and the perfect will of God for your life. You see, it is time that we get rid of these limiting beliefs. Don't limit what God can do in your life in 2024. Decide that this year, before I go into this next year, actually by the end of this week, I'm going to get rid of these mindsets that have been keeping me where I am for so long. We have to break the chains of the limiting beliefs in our lives. So quickly, how do you do it? The first thing that I believe you need to do is you have to have a goal. How many of you still have goals in your life? Okay, that's terrible. How many of you have goals in your life? Okay, if you don't have goals, get goals. Okay, get dreams. Don't stop dreaming. Okay, I know it doesn't look like the environment is conducive to, to dreaming. But we don't look to the world. We don't look to people. We look to God. Okay, so don't stop dreaming. Go write down your dreams. Go write down the plans, the purposes, the goals that God has for you. Listen, you might as well have something to aim at. You might as well have something to work, that you are working towards. You may not reach it tomorrow, you may not reach it today, but if you take steps once again towards something, you are quicker to going to get there than you, than you don't have goals. So, have a goal. Once again, Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So listen, if you don't have goals, if you don't have dreams, you will perish. And I believe we don't want to perish. The second thing that I believe we should do is if you have goals and if you have dreams, take action. Listen, do something. Do something. Nothing, nothing ever happens if you do nothing. Nothing ever happens if you do nothing. Take a step in the direction of your dreams and your goals. Once again, you may not be able to do it all, but you can take a step in that direction. You see, this is how it works. We have beliefs. We have thinking. We have emotions. Okay, which results in habits. Okay, and that leads to the results that we achieve in life. But sometimes we think that in order to change the belief, I need to change the belief. But how many of you have ever changed a thought with a thought? You can't change a thought with a thought. How do you change a thought? Through action. The moment that you take an action, you start challenging the limiting belief that you have because you thought, I couldn't do this. But then you start taking a step in that direction and all of a sudden you realize, you know what, I actually can do this. Okay, and how many times is that how we learn in life? That's how our children learn. That's, that's how we learn. If you do something, you might fail, but don't stay in the failure. Get up and try again. Get up and try again. And the more you try, the more you take the steps, the more you will see the results. So if you want to change the beliefs, have a goal, take action towards it. Okay, even if it looks like it's not working, just keep on taking action. Okay, and eventually you will prove yourself that you can actually do that. And then all that you do is, is that you evaluate the results. You see, don't let the results limit you. When you fail, don't say, oh, you know what, I knew I would fail. You see, that's a limiting belief. Do it, try it again and again and again and again. Evaluate the results. Don't let the results define you you define yourself by the choices that you make. And then once you do that, if you keep on doing that, you will change the belief that you have about your life. You will change the belief that you have about your life. So I want to encourage you, and this is something that's really strong in my heart to share with people this morning. You know, we live in a place that is so, like I said, so negative. There are people that have such a bad attitude in this place. You know, sometimes people have called this place fail van der Beil. They have called this place um, the dead triangle. They have called this place many things. But uh, there was once a pastor who called this place the golden triangle. And things started changing. 
because people believe that there's opportunity in this place. Because the problem is not the place. The problem is the mindset that we have about the place. And sometimes we allow the mindset of the place to get on the inside of us. And if the mindset of the place gets on the inside of you, you start behaving like the rest of the place. But you have to change your mindset. You have to change your mindset. If you are where God has called you to be, then you have to start making the decision and say, I will do what God wants me to do. I will be the difference in this place. I will be one of the people that doesn't just accept the status quo and say, if this is what the place is like. I will say that I will start being different. I will start doing something else. And I will start seeing the results that God has for this place. So this, this year, go get rid of the limiting mindsets. Let God break the chains of the limiting mindsets over your life. See things from God's perspective and allow Him to transform your life. Let's pray. Father God, we come this morning and Father, Lord, I know that people have said a lot of things about the Vault Triangle. People have proclaimed a lot of things about this place. And Lord, maybe sometimes Lord, it is true, but it is true because people have this mindset about this place. But Father, I thank you that it is not the place that matters. Lord, it is our mindset, our attitude, our beliefs that matters. So this morning I want to pray, Lord. Lord, your word says that we should take authority, Lord, over thoughts, ideas, Lord, that, that limit us, Lord. And Father, I pray this morning that we take authority over every thought that is contradicting the word of God. Every thought that is, that, is, that is against your word, Father God. We take authority over those thoughts. And Father, we declare, Lord God, life over this place. We declare healing over this place. We declare restoration over this place. We declare revival over this place, Lord. And Lord, not only do I speak it, when I speak it over this place, I'm not just speaking it over people's lives. I'm speaking it, Lord God, over, over every person that is living here, over every situation, over every thing that is happening here, Father, we're speaking the life of Jesus, the Jesus 10, 10 life, where he said, I came so that you may have life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. I speak that life and I thank you, Lord, that people will stand up, they will get rid of these limiting mindsets and they will be all that you want them to be. They will have all that you want them to have and they will do all that you call them to do and we pray all of that in the name of Jesus. Amen.